Tonight, actor and screenwriter Kate Hewlett talks her brand new movie The Swearing Jar, Stargate Atlantis, her big brother David, and Bob reviews Don't Worry Darling. That ought to put it over the top. It's up all night with Bob. I'm Owen. So you're a musician and an artist? I'm in a band. I don't believe in collaboration. And yet it exists. Hey now, thanks for staying up all night with Bob. And if the thing that keeps you up all night is the thought of a like or subscribe button going dangerously unsmashed, why not do your part and smash mine? Folks, my guest tonight is a lovely and talented actor, writer, producer, songwriter, and singer who recently adapted her award-winning 2008 play, The Swearing Jar, into the feature film of the same name, directed by Lindsay McKay, which had its debut just last week at the Toronto International Film Festival, or as we say back home, the TIFF, and also just happens to be opening on dozens of actual movie theater screens in the U.S. this weekend, as well as on demand. Ladies and folks, we've only a half hour until the baby wakes up. Please welcome my friend and yours, Kate Hewlett. How are do you, we, my friend? Do we call it the TIFF? <laughs> I call it the TIFF. The it's TIFF. TIFF. It's TIFF. It's like the Facebook. <laughs> it's the Facebook. How was the TIFF? Tell me, tell me everything that happened to you at the TIFF. Well, welcome to the show, by the way. You look oh, thank lovely. You so much. It's nice to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Nice to see sure. you too. Yeah, it was very exciting because it uh, it only took me 20 years to to get this project made. And uh, it was very satisfying to see a full theater full of human beings watching it and responding. And also it was kind of like a wedding because my my family and friends and teachers and all kinds of people showed up. And that was pretty, pretty amazing. Come on, how amazing. What? Where was the uh, premiere? It was at Scotiabank Theatre. Oh, okay. So I actually used to go there. And it's, you know, one of the big ones with a big giant escalator. And I, it was just very exciting to have it there. Let me tell you about my evening last night. Yeah, tell me. Uh, Billy Regis <laughs> Philbin. Let me tell you what I saw last night. Let me tell you what I did. Uh, Lauren Ash, friend of the show, friend of the program. You know Lauren Ash? I don't know her, but I know of her. You know, you know who she is. Awesome. She has been following the Don't Worry Darling um, drama since day one. I have not. I quickly read the Wikipedia version, but she decided to rent out a theater in Burbank last night and have all of her friends come. And we were going <laughs> we to watch uh, Don't Worry Darling. So we went out there and it was a lot of fun. And I got to say, the movie was not at all uh, as bad as I was expecting it to. And Harry Styles, I thought was fine. And it is what it is. It's a little They're bit- They're going to put like... that on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> Good kind of big time American thriller that they don't make anymore. And if my friend hadn't rented out the theater, I wouldn't have gone because I barely ever go to the movies anymore because, you know, people. But we went and I just gorged myself having not been there very much you know, on popcorn and, and <laughs> uh, M&Ms and perfect movie for that. And then I come home and I have that kind of sick, nauseous feeling you have after watching a big Hollywood movie and eating ju uh, junk food. And I come home and I see that your film is now already on demand. So I stay up. I crack a Pepsi. I don't have any Pepsi. <laughs> and I and I watch the movie and I can't honestly, honestly, uh, Kate, mm -hmm. it's really, really lovely. And I felt kind of nourished in it by it in a way that I didn't the feel the evenings not. early off, earlier <laughs> off, right? Give us the thumbnail because you you are a new mother, and this is a part of the story of the of the of the show written many many years before you became a mom. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's your kind of what's your logline? Because I know it's it's the kind of movie that if you said just a little bit too much, you could give away. I don't know how much. I can't remember how much the trailer gives away. But what's your what's your logline? They've been, they've been good in the trailers and they've been good in the reviews for the most part, unless they hated it. I, I do usually tell people it is about, uh, you know, very, very happily married couple, very much in love, lots of banter and silliness and everything. They, uh, she throws a birthday concert for her husband and through uh, a memory and song, they we discover that she has also got feelings for the guitar player. Right. Yeah, fair that's, enough. I that's think a hint. That's a, yeah. you know, that's a sousan of uh, <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm recommending it very highly. Lovely songs, lovely score. Who wrote the score? Kim Williams wrote the score. He Kim is Williams. a genius. And some lovely performances. Let Adelaide yeah. Clemens, how, so did you know how, did you spend any time with this actor? I did not spend any time with this actor. <laughs> because it's uncanny to me watching it. And I'm like, oh, my God, she is doing a perfect Kate Hewlett. 
I, it, that's what all my friends said. My all my high school friends were freaking out afterwards. I I don't see it at all, hilariously. Yeah. But apparently there are a lot of similarities. And no, we had only spoken. We did a little bit of, um, uh, you know, we ch- we chatted over Zoom and that sort of thing while they were rehearsing because they had some yeah. questions about the script. But we we didn't know each other. And her audition, I think, was very similar to what she ended up doing. And she's Australian? Yeah. That's what a jerk, right? Well, yeah. no, it is. It's unbelievable how good she is. One of the things it's so that it kind of does so beautifully is like the it's the joy and the laughter and the little moments and the dumb inside jokes the couples share. It's really, really hard to recreate that on screen. They have a kind of a natural thing together. They are such good actors, all of them. It, it's totally it totally blew my mind i um adelaide for instance adelaide clemens who plays carrie she literally respects the punctuation of the of the writing wow. and yet it feels like she's just speaking it feels right. like i i've never seen anything like it honestly there's yeah. there like the ellipses are there the the it's just it's absolutely incredible and she got it from the beginning she her audition was was really was really beautiful. We did have someone else attached for a long, long time and it didn't work out with scheduling. And, and so Adelaide actually auditioned. We actually, you know, people had to audition, even, even her and uh, her audition was just absolutely stunning. And uh, Douglas Smith, who was on big love for many seasons and plays the musician and her husband's played by Patrick J. Adams, who was on suits who's also terrific. Everybody's great at this. And Kathleen Turner, I think, turning in a late career best. Oh, I hope you weren't smoking on the lawn. I wasn't smoking. I was quitting. With a cigarette in your mouth? It's unlit and it's menthol. This is phase two. And what was phase one? Switching to menthol. You've always smoked menthols. Phase one is a very long phase. Exactly, but I, I love that character. Um, and I, I, I just thought she was great. Did you get to spend any time with her? No, because my stupid baby arrived three weeks early. And so I didn't get to really be on set at all. Oh, I was bummer. supposed to be there, but I, mean, I would have been extremely pregnant. But I, I actually missed the entire shoot and only got to be there for one day at the very, very end. And I hadn't, you know, I, I hadn't been outside in about a week. So I was I was a bit of a mess. But I, yeah, I met her that one day and that was it. So I got to meet her, but I didn't get to really work with her at all. Actually, one of the highlights was the Zoom read through, which you don't hear very often as a highlight. But right. ha- having all those actors and having Kathleen Turner say some of those lines, I I couldn't believe how exciting it was. And I got that sense that, it, oh, my God, this is going to work. Yeah. Then the chemistry between Simon and Carrie, as you said. And yeah, it was they were all just so talented. I think they rehearsed for a couple of days. I mean, they they didn't really? they had together before, and they they just were so good, so yeah, talented. It has it has people will describe things this way sometimes, and you don't really know, but it has a kind of a lived in feel. Like it feels like mm-hmm. you're kind of being airlifted into these people's um, lives, which is hard to pull off. It's about a lot of things, like it's about joy and grief, and but it's about motherhood, like. Mm-hmm. What was what have you learned about motherhood since writing this show way back in 2008 to the way things have been to your actual experience the last how, how old is your uh, your beautiful daughter now? She is uh, a year and a half almost. And I watched the movie for the first time. The final version of the movie I saw for the first time at TIFF. So oh, wow. that was actually my first time seeing the, the full thing. And it was pretty weird actually to watch it as a mother, like to, to, I, I've always felt this way though, cause I started writing it in my twenties. So there were a lot of things I hadn't lived yet. And I hope that those things feel true for people, even though I haven't lived through them, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, but I definitely do feel that they, the motherhood thing still, still rings true to me. And I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy that I don't, didn't watch it and go, Ooh, <laughs> that feels false. I got that wrong. The, you know, like her little uh, Carrie has a sort of breakdown at one point talking about how she hates kids and doesn't want a baby and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, this feels like, like a thing that could happen. I think I, I knew the characters so well 
I had been working on the characters for so long. And as you said, you know, her voice is very much my voice. And I think I was able to just put those characters into whatever situations they were put into. And I knew what would, what they would sound like. And I knew what it would feel like. And I guess maybe that's where the honesty comes from. It yeah. sounds very pretentious, but. No, but it is, yeah. it's hard to dramatize ambivalence. It, it kind of lives in that space. Like this is a character who really doesn't have a clear indication of what kind of victory looks like to her until really throughout most of the movie, right? And there's always sort of that chronic dissatisfaction kind of line underneath it a little bit. Yeah, and I think a bit of anxiety probably too. I think it is a, you know, one one of the questions that I started with was what happens if there is truly only one person for you mm -hmm. and it doesn't work out for whatever reason, what does that mean <laughs> for the rest of your life? And I think then I started asking, okay, what happens if you are in love with two people at the same time? And there are potentially two people that you could be with um, and you have to sort of decide. Your new movie is called The Swearing Jar. What? Kate Hewlett is your favorite swear word. Fuck balls. Fuck balls. Appears in the film, I believe. Probably. Good, good, good swear word. What's the swear word you use most often, if different? Fuck. Replacement swear word, then, you use around the baby. Do you, do you now have a swearing jar at home? I keep thinking she's young enough that it doesn't matter. But then the other day, I called myself a dodo, and she repeated it. Oh. So... It's time to stop. But at the moment, I still do swear. Name an artist, any kind of artist. Could be an actor, could be a visual artist, could be a painter, could be a writer, could be a dancer. You know what an artist is. Of the last <laughs> 20 years that you wish were better known. Hannah Moscovich. See, now I feel like I know her name. Who is Hannah Moscovich? Hannah Moscovich is a playwright uh, and now a screenwriter, TV writer, but still writes plays, even though she's kind of, she kind of exploded in um, TV and film as well. But she is, uh, she's the best playwright. We were at National Theater School at the same time. We were both there. We were both there doing acting. And she was doing a lot of writing even back then. And she was incredible. And she wrote the Russian play and she wrote essay and she has written all these amazing things. And I think she's about to get very famous because she works on Interview with the Vampire. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. I saw, I saw a spot for that. Did Jerry Lewis or Don Knotts? Uh, Don Knotts. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. What's the scariest movie ever made? We got a couple of Halloween questions here. Psycho. What's the dumbest I saw Psycho. Halloween? I saw Psycho, Psycho 2, and Psycho 3 all in one weekend when I was 10. Oh, that's a good idea. I saw Psycho 2 when I was about that age, and it scared the hell out of me. The problem is that one of them makes you afraid to shower and the other one makes you afraid to bathe. So for a while, things were not pretty around our house. Psycho, Psycho, it's in, I, I'm glad we're talking about the sequels, actually, because Psycho 2 is actually quite an effective um, sort of thriller horror movie. I, I remember someone was cut up in a freezer. Oh, well, that's right. Them. There's a great, yes, that's right. There's a great scene where Norman has... Um, has buried a body inside the uh, ice freezer outside the motel, like you see it at the gas station or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's a cop or a sheriff or somebody's questioning him. And it's a hot day and he starts and the sheriff lifts the lid and he starts reaching out for uh, little little bits of ice to kind of suck on in the heat. Yes! And his mm -hmm. hand is moving closer and closer. You can see that the ice is yeah. getting bloody further down because that's where the body is. And it's, it's one of, it's a, scene of tension i mean you know it ain't hitchcock but it's close it's pretty good yeah. as previously mentioned you start on four episodes of stargate as gd miller's sister to david hewlett's character uh name name one of those episodes by episode title if you can mckay and mrs miller that's a good title right i think they named your character miller this is my suspicion oh yes i think, oh, I think you're right it, mckay was already established but martin garrow wrote the episode and i'm positive that he oh yeah he wrote much. Uh, yeah. yeah whatever happened to that guy yeah right it's so sad <laughs> he never works why don't you get another show martin <laughs> um 
<laughs> be more successful. Let me tell you something. When I came down here in, in uh, 2002 or three, uh, and we shared a manager, Glenn Coburn, a Meridian artist who I still yes. uh, rep by in Canada. And uh, we both came, Glenn used to have a house in, Pal in the Palisades, this this dumpy place. It was falling into the, into the, the, the hill and uh martin and i both go out there and i remember we we're both kind of taking a couple of generals and when i'm hanging out at the house one night and glenn and martin come back and they've been to like a uh they've had a dinner meeting with something and martin has had a pitch and it's gone terribly badly and martin's very embarrassed and i just remember thinking at the time i'm gonna beat martin i'm gonna be the guy <laughs> who's gonna have the bigger career in la than martin Garrell. <laughs> he won You've both done very well. No, he won. He won. A, it's a clear victory now. <laughs> What's the first album you ever bought? The first record I ever bought was Yaz, You and Me Both. And the first tape I ever bought was Heart. And I can't remember the name of the album. Do you remember here? Do you remember Yaz with two Z's? Because there was one. There was a there was a Yaz that came out around 1990. They had a dance hit called "The Only Way Is Up." You ever heard of I that? I do not. The I do not. The only way is up, baby. I I remember that song. No, that was Yaz with a that was Yaz with two Z's. You dance like my baby. <laughs> Longest distance you've ever run without stopping. I have done three half marathons. Hey, good for you! Really? Yeah. Recently? 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago, just Since before I started baby. writing. Since having the baby. Yeah, um, no. the last, yeah, the last time I ran a half marathon was probably when I was in my early thirties. Song you sing for your daughter. Oh, do you have a, do you have a lullaby? Do you have a little thing? Do you have a go-to to get her to go to sleep? Yes. I sing her a song from Peter Pan, the musical from like the sixties. Oh, okay. I think I, I only, I only know the one I'm flying. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same show. Yeah. yeah. Was that What's your Mary Martin? I'm flying. <laughs> no, that was my, every time I hear it, every time I think of that song, I think of there was an SCTV sketch. I All we ever talk about, all I ever talk about on this thing is SCTV. That's fine by me. Show. There was an SCTV a remember. sketch with John Candy because the, because Peter Pan was famously played by a woman uh, at the time, I think probably Sandy Duncan or something. And John Candy played Divine <laughs> in Divine's uh, stage debut as Peter Pan, and so Divine is 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 a, I'm flying. Oh. And there's all these guys in the back. And <laughs> I'm flying. Look at me way up high. Suddenly here am I. I'm flying. It's Peter Pan, live at the Mellonville War Memorial Auditorium, August 4th through August 9th. No reserve seating necessary. <laughs> the, the bullies trying to get him off of the ground. So my Mary Martin sounds a little bit more like John Candy doing... Uh, yeah. doing um, I'm going to look that up. But what, uh, so what, what's the song that you know from the show? What's the song that your baby likes? Um, it's, it's like, once upon a time and long ago, I recall a song I used to know. I don't even know what it's called. Yeah. Oh. Hey, my little, uh, it's like a lullaby it's just a lullaby a from lullaby. peter Pan. yeah right and my, well, if, you ever my... Need me, if you ever need me to stop by just i'm <laughs> flying just come over to the just lean over the crib if we need help waking her up i'll call you <laughs> what's the best concert you ever saw madonna what blonde doing? ambition oh, i was blonde there ambition. yeah the one where the the cops came because because boobies Right, the Sky Dome show. This was this was captured uh, for uh, posterity in um, Truth or Dare. Yes. They say that you can't do the masturbation scene tonight, otherwise you'll be arrested. Really? Mm. So what's considered masturbation? When you stick your hand in your crotch. Oh, I'm so excited. Dear Lord. Okay. Okay. Shh. Saw last night this in Toronto, the fascist this. state of. Toronto. I believe that you and I went to the Mountain Goats. We did. We went to a Mountain Goats show at the uh, Danforth Music Hall. Yes, and that would be my second favorite. They were incredible. Yes, I remember that show very well. And I'll tell you what I remember about it was there was a dude... <laughs> 
<laughs> there was some dude in front of us picking on some other guy. Do you remember yes. this? He was bullying yes. him or pushing him around or something like that. And your first instinct was, I need to do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> yes i dove in and my first instinct was let's move further away from this <laughs> yes i do remember that there was a tall yeah. man picking on a short man there was i think or the no, other way there around was. there was yeah it was a terribly crowded show and it was it, it, they were he was great but they were great but but it was uh no i do remember that and i just remember thinking oh jesus christ she's gonna get me beaten up yeah I don't have the best instincts in those in those moments. <laughs> What's the best franchise? Star Wars, Star Trek, or Stargate? Oh, that's you can't make me do that. I know. But all right, let's let's say Stargate. Let's let's take Stargate as a given. Okay. Oh, Trek or Wars? Star Wars. Thank you. What's the last TV series you binged? Again, I probably pre baby, I'm guessing. No, I do. I still watch a lot of TV. I am currently binging The Last Kingdom. We'll make this the last one. If you could okay. play any famous woman in a biopic, oh my uh, gosh. Who, would, who would it be? Emma Thompson. Oh, well, that'd be good casting. I could see you playing Emma Thompson. The, what part I'll of her be... story <laughs> is most she compelling? Just... She reminds me of my mother. And I think it would be very, uh, very comforting to, to actually, I just want to meet Emma Thompson. <laughs> well, really, my enough. entire life goal is just to meet Emma Thompson. Um, I auditioned for a Marilyn Monroe biopic many years ago. God. And they, yeah, no pressure. And they said, don't worry about what, you know, don't do an impression. Like it just make it your own. Don't worry about trying to be her. And I got there and everyone else was dressed like Marilyn Monroe. And I, I went in and I was like, Hey, I just, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I was like, so it was like, you're, it was like you're John Candy. I was like, Hey, can you bring that tea over? And I could just see them like, took that note a little too literally <laughs> hey i wanted to i'm glad we did this because you, your movie and i'm not kidding i'm not just saying this because we're pals the movie is very very good and and deserves to be seen and i think we may be we may be staring down the we may be at the very beginning of a long journey for this film and i hope we are i really hope so i hope people see it and i hope yeah i hope so yeah, i think you're gonna be a busy gal come awards time Kate Hewlett, thank you so much for taking the time today. Oh, Andy, come over here for a while. But you want to stay here? Well, Andy, Baby. In fact, Andy turned five yesterday. His oh. birthday is the same as Dennis McGrath. He was born the same year. Do I think that Dennis was reincarnated as, a, as an overactive, highly athletic chihuahua? It's possible. He has a certain... <laughs> <laughs> That's well done, Dennis. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Kate Hewlett, uh, thank you for staying up all night with Bob. And we have some beautiful parting gifts for you. And we hope you'll return sometime. Like, uh, come visit us <laughs> next time you're in LA. If you're okay. in LA again, which will probably be in really about hope five so. years, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> That's our show. <laughs> It's the end of another Up All Night with Bob show. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notifications, do all those things. God love you. We'll see you next week, everybody. Good night.